worst three. Worst three things. I will go ahead and start us off by what is the what is the deal with the dubbing? I mean, why? Why, why, why? The dubbing on the U.S. submarine uh, Shadow Sniper Stingray. I forget what it's called. Um, <laughs> uh, Seahawk. That, that's what I said. Uh, why Why did they dub in English okay. over the English speaking? It was so Oh, weird. okay. Francisco? Yes. I'm going to blow your mind. Okay. That wasn't dubbed. Yes, it was. Look at the no. lips. They do not match. No, it no, was. It, no, that wasn't dubbed in. Was. In the U.S. version, they dub over them because the American acting yes. is terrible. Yes, that's true. I was about to say that. Yes. Wait. In, in, <laughs> hold on. Yes. Hold now. They're not dubbed, but they are dubbed. Now I'm very confused. No, no, no. Okay. In the okay. Japanese in version, the, ja- in the Japanese dubbed. version, Japanese it's version, not. Yes. Those are the actors' actual voices. I, they may have pro- they may have done some ADR. That might have been the issue. Oh, but those yeah, are the actual actors' voices oh, in yes. the U.S. version. Uh-huh. They yes. not only dubbed over the Japanese actors with English, but they thought the American actors' performances were so bad oh, they that were. they just re-recorded their lines. <laughs> With new actors, and it wow. sounded better. <laughs> it sound better. So here's what you need to do: we need we Not need a much. super cut. We need a super cut of the, <laughs> the just the American portion uh, of the uh, the USS Stingray Anopolis to have in the <laughs> Japanese version of King Kong vs. Godzilla. Like I said, it's not much better, and you wouldn't be asking, why did they dub over the English? Because it's even worse without it. <laughs> it's just yes. so, it's so, I don't get it. It's, I, I guess, okay, I, yeah, there, one of the, yeah, yeah, one of, yeah, one of the, I love how one of the, the uh, you know, the midshipman or whatever, the guy who's got the headphones on and is listening to things, he has this weird kind of pseudo southern drawl. It's really strange. Yes. <laughs> I thought it was great. <laughs> in the Japanese, he does not sound like that in the in the US version. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> anyway, also that submarine looked like there's way too much room in the command <laughs> the command center. It just seemed like like <laughs> what is well, this, this is a studio summer. set? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're you're just like yeah, it, it, Francisco's all like that submarine is too spacious. One star. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> hey, come on. We what gotta be this, realistic a in this for kaiju's <laughs> giant monster. Movie. I can accept a, a, a 150 foot tall fire breathing lizard dinosaur thing, but that submarine is too spacious. One star. <laughs> hey, hey, there's real okay. The the giant lizard and giant uh, ape are made up. There are real submarines, so make them look real. <laughs> Come on. Anyway, that's have you been on a submarine? <laughs> I've seen pictures. Uh, Paul, let's <laughs> go to you next. What's something you don't like about this film? Um, I, I, this is not much of a like, but it's it kind of throws me back. Uh, the the miniatures are obviously miniatures. Now, now I, I will say this with love, though. It it looks like exactly if I were to film miniatures and make my own <laughs> film using miniatures, this is what it would look like. Like with when they show like, oh, and you go to Universal Studios. Oh, that's the tank where we film the water scene and that big blue sky is the background. I'm like, how do you make that real? Because if I were to do that, it would look like this movie where you can tell it's a fake they're backdrop. They're in a, a tanks of water somewhere. Yes, exactly. I don't understand. I don't understand how movies have progressed so far since this was made with their miniatures. <laughs> but, well, well let me too, uh, and I, I think, think I brought. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think I brought this up when I was here for Godzilla 54, but it's less. Well, it's partly advancements in special effects technology, but it's also an illustration of the differences in mindsets for Western and Japanese filmmakers. Mm-hmm. For Westerners, you know, uh, like us, the, we're used to gauging special effects by how real they look. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Japanese filmmakers, to even to this day, aren't striving for realism. They're striving for having 
striking images. They want it to look good. They don't oh, care yeah. what they have to do. Oh, they don't care if it looks real, so to speak. They just want it to look striking. And if ah. it's within their budget. Yeah, also, yeah, they uh, sure. that, the that's, Japanese yeah, that, film now, industry the way, is these, much smaller than Hollywood, so they don't get to play with as much models are, are, are way better than models I could create. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> so. Totally. Wait, 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 Paul. Well, that's because of, Eiji Tsuburaya was a craftsman. Point so. of <laughs> order, Paul. You said this would look like uh, something you would make, but if you can't make models that good... This no, would look better if I than were what you could film, make. I meant uh, making, like, if I were to film, uh, like, if you made these and I were to it. film it. Okay, I wouldn't be able to make these. Okay, it's a good thing you clarified that. because I saw Jimmy reaching for a button to interrupt because uh-huh. he has to interrupt the master interrupter. Yeah, I mean, go for you gotta, it. You got to do that. Anyway, let's go back go to you now, Nathan. What's something, I mean, you love a lot of these Godzilla movies, but was there something you didn't yeah. like about this film? Well, we've already covered one of them, actually. So I'm just going to move on to one of my other because I had three candidates. I'm going to move on to one of my uh, my other ones since we already talked about the terrible sure. American acting, <laughs> and that is, and I will admit this could be potentially controversial because it has been used as fuel for controversy, uh-huh. and that is Fukuberry. the tanned uh, the no the <laughs> the tanned Asian actors. Oh, the you play the Islanders, yeah, yeah. because yeah. it's supposed to Horrible. be a Polynesian actor. It's supposed to, excuse me, it's supposed to be a Polynesian island. Oh, there aren't. There's a. You know, I'm going to say there's a, there's few, if none, <laughs> a Polynesian yeah. actor, especially in early 1960s Japan. So Toho's solution was to basically give their actors spray tans. Yep. And there are some people who look at that now and think it's racist. I have even heard a few people go so far as to basically call it blackface. And I'm not, (laughs) it's, yeah, I don't care either. It's not one of my worst three because I think it's racist. It's one of my worst three because I'm sick of the controversy. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Because for me, it's a non-issue. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, same here. Yeah, I, I, it doesn't bother me, especially since I figured, you know, that during that time and a foreign movie that's not a big of utmost paramount or concern, and it probably wouldn't be budgetarily feasible to do anyway. I mean, today you could just CG, CG them and you won't have to worry about it. Well, um, it, that would still probably be considered problematic. Really, they did it for practical reasons. It wasn't because they were trying to be racist. They're just like, well, we need these people to look Polynesian. We there don't have go. any Polynesian actors. What do we do? So, uh, okay, guys, let's go through. Let's do another a thing. A couple other things. Well, three other things we dislike. One a piece, so to speak. Um, and I'll go ahead and Everybody start got that. for me. And this is another thing that's like, what? So, what is the deal with the ending? I I don't know if it's the mayor or if he's someone. He seems like someone Talk in the government. He's a scientist. The scientist. He's a scientist. He says. We must learn how to treat plants and animals well. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> what are you talking about? What's that have to do with it? Godzilla and King Kong? Because they're saying, what do you think? Who do you think? Uh, do you think Godzilla survived or something? And I was like, and then he says I don't that. Know. Ask the captain. He'll okay. up this episode with it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a little goofy, but I'm going to tell you right now, having seen every Godzilla movie, there are I have seen much sillier moralizing at the end of one. Yeah, I was about I, to I say that's a pretty about legit other moral because it depends. It's all a lot of the Godzilla f- films have the same theme about protecting the earth, and it's when we don't and we upset nature's balance that we get problems like this. So, yeah, and things like just the to, plants and the animals are part of that. And but just to illustrate my point, the the so called moral of Godzilla versus Space Godzilla is no joke. Don't pollute space. There you go. <laughs> Well, that's important, but I wish there was something along the way, something to see that this was the moral. It didn't make a lot of sense. There wasn't like, it wasn't like if if God if King Kong used plants or something to do with Godzilla, or Godzilla was destroying that was other the plants or animals. Oh, gosh, so it just I I or or if or if the reason Godzilla came back was because they were I don't know they're destroying deforesting something I don't know then it would have made a little bit more sense but I that would have made a little it. more sense but I, they're on I a time lo- crunch 
Okay, whatever. I would love to know what what subtitles you were seeing because I watched this on the Criterion disc on my way here, and I don't uh-huh. remember the subtitles being exactly like that. Okay, I will bring it right up. Hold, give me one second. I don't <laughs> oh, care if you want to mode me, but we're gonna we're gonna watch this together so that you can see what I what I <laughs> perceived. Okay, so this is the part I'm talking about. It's in Japanese, but I will uh, pause and read what they're saying in the in the subtitles that I am. I'm you seeing. you did archive dot uh, org for this, didn't you? I don't know what you're talking yeah. about. Uh, oh, okay, that's Go- what I figured. So is Godzilla dead? Well, do you think it survived? It's possible. Well, I guess that we, as humans, must change how we treat plants and animals. It's time to learn from them. That's all I have to say. What the junk does that even mean? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I've seen those subtitles before. The Criterion disc is different. <laughs> oh, okay. Nice. So what's what's uh, the Criterion? So? I honestly don't remember, but there wasn't anything about treating plants and animals better, so I'm not okay. sure. I, I don't right. remember. I just remember it wasn't quite like that. <laughs> Okay. Now right. I'm curious if my version is the same. Maybe I'm remembering wrong. Interesting. Okay. Well, if you <laughs> if the intro made no sense to you, that's why because that's the version I saw, <laughs> and it flummoxed me so much. I'm like, let's make this an intro. That that sounds good. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I'm just happy that you use the word flummox. <laughs> <laughs> I try. I try. All right. So now that we're done with my zaniness of like weird subtitles. Uh, let's go to Paul next. What's something you didn't like about something else you didn't like about King Kong vs. Godzilla? Okay. And this is kind of a, a, a little annoying while watching. Sometimes Godzilla looks really cool, and then sometimes he looks like he's gained a little weight. Like he's as a, like a, a chubster. <laughs> he has the thing is he I understand you have different suits depending on what's going on. But can we make them a little more consistent? Like, you don't have like, oh, this is Godzilla when he's on a diet, and this one is when he's not. And then the same thing goes with the the um, King Kong. Like, I understand the claymation in it. Like, oh, you want to show expressive eyes. By the, the time you put into creating the eyes, like, expressive and, and claymating it and then doing it frame by frame, the time and money spent that, just make the suit that the guy's wearing, to, like, be able to close eyes and everything. Like, let's Exactly. They did! <laughs> well, well, then why am I watching claymation <laughs> and not a monster suit? <laughs> it was actually it was probably a puppet for the head when they did the close-ups. Well, yeah, let's do you know, it all it the same like one. Yes, I agree. That's fine, but let's let's use it all in the same thing. Like, let's make it consistent. <sighs> would you At least stop? Look consistent. Would you stop tiptoeing around my tragic maker, please, Paul? Sure. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll stop. Nathan, what's something you don't like about this film? Uh, well, it's actually something that I don't know, considering that you got where you guys watched it. It may not be an issue for you, depending on their source. But the one that I had was there is inconsistent film quality. Uh, I'm talking about the film stock because there are times where it will look nicer than other. Yeah, there are sometimes it will look nicer than other ones. Unfortunately, King Kong versus Godzilla, despite being the massive hit that it was, was notorious for many years for its poor preservation. Um. Yeah, there, there was a point in the, the 70s, early 70s, where Toho was taking a lot of their older films from the 60s and then editing them down for what was called the Champion Film Festival, which hmm. was for children. So they cut the movies down a little bit more, and they Honda did this for King Kong vs. Godzilla. I think he chopped it down to about like 74 minutes, somewhere oh, around wow. there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the problem was that, you know, and that was from the original uh, 35 millimeter. So that that was preserved pretty well, but the parts that he had taken out were not preserved, and then they had to Ugh. later on be spliced back in with 16 millimeter films, which Ooh. is why, you know, when you're looking at it, it it won't, you know, there are points where you can see when the when the edits happen when they're splicing it back in because the film quality drops down. Here's the annoying, and that was since that was the only version that was available that was released on home video on uh, home media in Japan, specifically on Laserdisc. Here's the annoying thing: the movie got completely remastered in 2016, but Toho has not released that outside of Japan. 
and what oh. is on the Criterion, the big Criterion collection, which is one of the several big reasons why the set got middling reviews from a lot of people in the kaiju fandom is they gave them the Laserdisc version and kept the best looking one oh. to themselves. So well, I'm yeah. sure I'm sure that's the one Paul has though the import like like Bex redeemed Jutaku no. here in, in chats and Paul got the Steelbook Director's Cut extended release special edition signed sealed and delivered by Honda himself must have been and it's signed by Taco <laughs> wow um, A- is it actually uh, that's impressive no, no. I mean did you have to perform some necromancy to do that because yeah um, it, no, so it was I, like it was, zombie it, Honda it, that's impressive no, no it was eight ninety nine on eBay. <laughs> No, I don't remember. Wow. I, I I did get it online, but I don't remember how much. Oh, okay. But anyway. Just being silly with your import. Yeah. Anyway, uh, well, guys, let's get into the things we hated most about King Kong vs. Godzilla. And uh, let's start Let's start with Nathan, uh, because I'm very curious, loving on so many kaiju movies, Godzilla movies, what do you hate most about this in particular one? Well, you guys have kind of hinted at it already. Yeah. That freaking Kong suit. Well, you, I mean, that's my <laughs> turn. Go, let's, okay, Paul, that, real quick. Is that yours? That Kong, no, it's not mine. Okay, so me and Paul. That is my, that is my, that is my tragic right maker. Yes. That is my tragic maker. That Kong oh, suit. Gosh. The Godzilla suit looks great. That Kong <laughs> suit looks terrible. Yeah, it's no, I'm sorry. Compared to the Kong suit, the Godzilla suit yeah. looks great. Oh, that Kong yeah, suit looks yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that Kong suit looks like a, a a really dirty shag carpet that they just slapped a monkey face on. I, I mean, it looks it's... awful. And it looks even worse when it's wet. Oh, yeah. It looks truly horrible when it's wet. You know what? I just the, I don't know what oct- it is. When the octopus was like on top of him and it would made his face all wet and stuff. And mm-hmm. then I was like, oh, that's disgusting. And then it changed and all of a sudden he's dry. And I was about to like, like, like argue against that, like a continuity, but like, oh, wait, it looks better dry. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm telling you, I don't know what it is. A.G. Subaraya was a special effects genius, but he couldn't make a good ape suit to save his life. I don't know what, because he tried several times, including another King Kong movie called King Kong Escapes, and it still looks... They He made a whole new suit, and it's only marginally better. I mean, and <laughs> it's just... I don't know what it is. I, I really don't. And to this day, Kong fans hate this suit. I would they see really why. do. Which it's is the so one bad. thing I'm not I am not the biggest fan of the 1976 remake of King Kong, but I will say this, they did um they did a man in a suit for Kong in that and it looks great. It yeah, really exactly. does and they That's, actually well, that was used like 10 it years was later, right? Well, yeah, it was like 15 years later, but and yeah. they did actually uh, Rick Baker was the guy in the suit for that and one of the cool things about that is they actually set the mask up so that it was his actual eyes and not That's prosthetic great. eyes. Oh good. Yeah, yeah. So it is it is a marked improvement over this. Yeah, I, so it's a creepy I mean, monkey suit. And you mentioned oh, the, sorry, yes. the the shag carpet effect. I feel yeah, like you caught yourself over, before Jimmy did. Overall, it yeah, I I think it that could have been saved. The overall body could have been saved. If the face didn't look like something that just got whacked with the ugly stick so many times, it just looks. I it didn't look. It didn't look apish. It looked like clay. Like clay face was having an off day and decided to sprout some hair. That's what it looked like. It was just. So oh man, I wish I wish I could do a screen share so that I could yeah. show you guys. I'm technically breaking character now. I just realized, but uh, <gasps> I wish you guys could look up. <laughs> I wish you guys could look up the suit from King Kong Escapes because it's only a little bit better. Oh, we can do that. We can we can look that up. Um, Francisco well, can. He has well, the magic. While I am doing that, uh, let's see, Paul. Why you talk to us about what? So it wasn't the King Kong suit. What was your no. tragic maker for this film? The thing that took me out of the movie the most, and this is something that we already talked about, was the acting. It was oh, really? so exaggerated by the Japanese actors versus so underplayed by the American actors. It was it was hard to find a tone, but even with the the Japanese acting, it was so over the top and cartoony. Um, I know they try to ground it in like real life, like drama, what's going on, but the acting just 
was so cartoony, it would not have surprised me if they inflated both King Kong and Godzilla with helium to in, to move them <laughs> instead of the balloons. I mean, that's just how over the top it seemed. But Well, that was it, the point. I told you, it's a satire. Yeah. So, yes, that's the suit in King Kong Escapes. So not much different. Oh, it's different, but it's just only marginally it's better. It's bulkier, yeah. Yeah. It's... And, and yeah. the face, and the face is, the face is better, but it's also more cartoony. Yeah, I was about to say that. Yeah, it it looks more. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it looks, yeah, it looks like it. I I don't know what to say. It just looks strange. It looks like it, it looks like a it looks like a mask. It doesn't look real at all. That's you know I think, what it looks like. It yeah. looks like it's part of the uncanny valley, but yes. in, a, in a claymation format, yes, exactly. rather than digital. <laughs> Wow. Yes, Jimmy, I know you're fond of that one because of Mechanicong. You rebuilt the oh. sucker. Yes, <laughs> we know. That's funny. But I will say tonally for the acting, watching the dubbed version of the the American version, that's that's way over the top and it's actually consistent throughout the film. So, oh, okay. Um and that part it's it's kind of fun to I actually like to have that on the background sometimes. Um the American dubbed version, just because it's oh, really? so over the top. Oh wow! Um, but uh, yeah, it but was, overall, oh, the uh, the movie is better Japanese wise. They they take it a little more seriously. I will say though, Paul, that none except for Taco, none of the characters were memorable for me. I mean, I had I had, could care less about any of what them. What about I'm, the the animal and trees guy? I mean, he was like the serious one. I, like. No, I don't. I barely remember him. So well, uh, in uh, in have uh, in defense of this movie, Taco oh. was so over the top that he kind of overshadows everybody what, else. What yeah. about the island translator? Do you remember him? Oh yeah, kind of a little <laughs> okay. bit. Okay, okay. Yeah, <laughs> he was that guy. Reminds me of Don Knotts. He's like a Japanese Don Knotts. Seriously. <laughs> oh, you know which character stood out to me a lot. That kid that wouldn't say hey to his mom that was calling him over and over again. No, no, he's just going to go get the magic liquid to put the guy to sleep. I'm not going to listen to my mom. Oh, the little island boy. Yeah, when I'm in trouble. No, 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 no. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, and if you have a bingo so there's card a out, lesson. Yes, there's a lesson. Disobedient for, child, right there. There you go. I was gonna say, there's a lesson for the kids watching the movie. Obey your mother, or the octopus will eat you. Yeah, exactly. and, <laughs> good. And smoking is okay with your mom. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Actually, I thought that was funny. I th again, yeah. part of the wow. satire, especially since they use the radio and they freak out over the radio. They're like, "What is the magic box?" Right. <laughs> exactly. 